Hello everyone, my name is Christopher Nightingale and I'm back again with another cheeky tier list. Now uh, some of you may know this, but my favourite movie star of all time is Mr Jackie Chan. <laughs> now he is a huge inspiration to me, when I was in my teenage years he was the person who inspired me to go into making films properly, so you know, without his inspiration I may not be here on having a YouTube channel making films today. So huge inspiration for me and for many other people around the world he is a remarkable human being. Uh, he can act, he can direct, he is famously well known for doing all his own stunts. He has made an awful lot of films over the years and today I'm doing a tier list for them. So we have legendary, great, good, okay, poor, because you know, every person has made some bad films, and not seen yet. And there are a huge amount to go through because he's had a very long career as Mr. Jackie Chan. So let's start with The Accidental Spy. I think The Accidental Spy is okay. It's not one of his best. I think he has some good scenes in it. Um, he, uh, it, it the best scene for me in the whole film is a fight sequence where he's just escaped a um, a sauna and uh, wearing nothing but a towel and he runs through a street market and the towel gets ripped away from him and he basically has to fight off loads of goons whilst maintaining his dignity and so he's constantly using props to not only fight with but cover himself up at the same time. It's very impressive how he does that. I don't know how he does that. That's the best scene in the film, by some distance. The rest of it is kind of... <sighs> uneventful. Which is funny, because it, it looks epic, and it should be more epic. And there are some stunt sequences in it that should be better than they are, especially the finale on the, with the big truck on the bridge. It, it should be better than what it is, but it's not quite there. So I'm just going to put it as okay. Next, Armour of God. Now, Armour of God is, I would say, a good Jackie Chan film. Some people may put it higher, but I think it's good. I think... As with, as with quite a few of his films, um, they don't focus too much on plot. <laughs> Um, but with this one, they really don't. Like, y y there's a lot of it that gets plodding. The, the first two thirds of it, after the intro, which is great, and which is the intro, you know, the the opening sequence that nearly killed him. Actually, is is famous for doing that. He fell from a tree um, when the branch snapped, and he cracked his skull, and he's got a metal uh, plastic uh, plug in his, his head <laughs> um, and uh, to, to cover a hole in his head because he needed brain surgery for it. He almost died, and it's with this film. Um, that, that opening sequence is great. There's a good car chase, and then the final third where there's two fight sequences in a row that are absolutely flawless. Like There's a fight, a fight sequences with a load of men in an old banquet, a load of monks in a banquet hall, and then he, he fights off four Amazonian women who are really adept at fighting. <laughs> um, those two fight sequences alone are just uh, superb. Um, the Troy is they come right at the end of the film. So you've got a whole length of time before it, a bit as like an hour before it, which is really dull, to be honest. There's not much going on. So it kind of bounces it out. There's there's nothing and there's brilliance in there, but the, the, it doesn't quite balance out to be you know great. So I'm just going to put it as good. Now this is, this is notorious on... Wikipedia for being the biggest one of the biggest flops of all time. 
And I remember distinctly going with my high school sweetheart to go and watch this in the cinema. And we were the only two who watched it. <laughs> this theatre was deserted. In fact, we, we might have been the only two people that watched it in the whole country. <laughs> and I actually really like it. I'm getting... I'm gonna put it. I think it's. I think out of all his Hollywood films, that one is one of the most fun, and actually surprisingly, the one that allows Jackie Chan to be the most like Jackie Chan. Because I can't say that about the vast majority of his Hollywood films, to be honest. You know where they actually just let him get on with it, and they let him have 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 fun and have real comedy in here. And Jackie Chan is a very good physical comedian. And it's nowhere more evident in his Hollywood films than in this one, Around the World in Eight Days. Not only that, there are some great fight sequences in here as well. There are some great moments where he has a fight, a fight in a painting, uh, an art gallery in, in France. Uh, he has a fight in there where whilst he's fighting, he and the people he's fighting with accidentally create like a picture <laughs> with all the paint around them. It's brilliant. Um, there's a great sequence where he harks back to Drunken Master 2 and he uses a bench to fight off uh, Daniel Wu, I think, is, is, uh, is the most impressive bit of fight choreography in any... Um, oh, uh, mm. There's maybe one more fight that's better than it in a Hollywood Jackie Chan film. Um but he, uh, Steve Coogan's really good in it. Cecile de France is lovely in it. Um, Jim Broadbent has a, a great villain part in this film. I, I, I highly recommend you check it out if you can. It's actually a lot of fun. It's actually a really good film. Oh, Chinese Zodiac. This is... Right. I think this is Okay. Because, with the exception of one sequence, which is outstanding, and I wish the whole film was like that, because you got to bear in mind, this is, bas this is basically Arm of God 3. Um, Jackie, by this stage, was is clearly winding down a little bit with the action. He said that this was his last big action film. Um uh, this was made in 2012. So, wow, 2012? Wow, 10 years ago. Oh, God, that's gone quick. Um, and he um, he's 58 in this film. To put it in perspective, he's the same age Roger Moore was in A View to a Kill, right? And there's no way in hell Roger Moore is doing some of the stuff that Jackie Chan is doing in this film <laughs> at, that, at a similar age. Um there's, there's a fight sequence in this film which starts with him having a fight on a settee with, uh, um, with one of the villains. He basically says, I can, I, can, I can kick your ass without leaving this couch, the villain says. And Jackie Chan says, all right, go on, show me then. And they basically have an entire fight where, none of, where at least one of their body parts is touching the sofa. So they, it's like, it's like, you no, know, the floor is lava. It's like kind of staying off the, you know, it's it, honestly, that's great. It then escalates into a full, long, extended fight sequence where he's being chased around an entire underground factory, and it culminates in a fight in a photography workshop. A studio where he's using big frames and he's using cameras with tripods to swing around and hit people. Honestly, it is incredible. That sequence alone, check it out on YouTube. The, the, the great thing about YouTube now is you can watch any of these. You don't have to watch the whole film. You just have to watch these individual scenes. Watch this sequence on YouTube if you can find it. Chinese Zodiac fight sequence. It'll probably come up. It's absolutely incredible. And to think he's 58 in this film when he made that. I, I can't, if I could move that well at 58 years old, I would be a happy, happy man. Because <laughs> he's astonishing in that. Unfortunately, the rest of the film's rubbish. I, I, I have to be honest, the rest of the film is absolutely rubbish. No plot, there's just, no, the plot's non-existent. The rest of the action is quite tame by comparison. Um... The only reason I'm saving it from poor is because it has one outstanding sequence in it. Um, I'm going to put Accidental Spy ahead of it. Um, there we go. 
Dragon Lord. This is a good film. Um, it's a bit different from other Jackie Chan films because it's less fighting in this one and it's got a lot more sporting action in it. Um, it famously has the sequence that took the most takes. Um, I think they took, and I believe this is right, 2,900 takes for one sequence, which was a hacky sack match, which is basically... Um, Football with a shuttlecock is basically it. And um, nowadays, if this was in Hollywood, they would probably go away and um, CG it all. Um, Jackie Chan doesn't do that. Um, he basically says, right, I'm going to do as many takes as it takes to get all these kicks right. And uh, there's a fi it's a five-minute sequence, and it took forever to shoot. Um, I believe it didn't do that well at the box office because... It had less fighting in it and had more sporting action in it. Um, which was a shame for the studio because they gave Jackie basically complete control over it and it took over a year to shoot because he kept on insisting that all these scenes be shot no matter how many takes it took. Um, so I have a huge admiration uh, for him with this film. Um and for those sequences alone, I think it's good. Dragons Forever. Wow, this is this is a lot of fun. Uh, this is again is a good film. Uh, it's got some. It's the last time we've to date we've seen Sammo Hung Yoon Byu and uh, Jackie Chan in one film, and that it's just great. It's it's brilliant. He, he fights Benny the Jet at the end again, which he did in Wheels on Meals, which we'll get to later on. But this is absolutely. This this is a really good film. There's a lot of good action sequences in this film. Um, less so with stunts, uh, more with just good fight sequences. Um, uh, he has a love interest in this film, and it's actually a really sweet little romance he has in this film as well. That that gets a plus for me because I actually quite like it when Jackie has little romantic leads in his films. Like it's quite sweet. Um, he doesn't have that in every film. I think he tries to stay away from it, but on the occasions where he actually does, they're actually really sweet, and they and it works well with this uh, this film. Um, and I love the little moves he does. Um, I, I, one thing I really like uh, admire about um, Jackie Chan's work is he takes a lot of time on really simple stuff, whether it's doing a little backwards flick of a hat in Miracles onto a hat rack, which obviously takes about 50 takes, and he knows it's going to take about 50 takes, but he thinks, no, if I do this, like, one in a thousand shot, it's going to look cool. He was doing Dude Perfect before Dude Perfect was doing all those stuff, before Dude Perfect was even a thing, you know, he was doing it years before then in his films, where he was doing little tricks, little moments that obviously he didn't need to do, but felt that if he did it, it looked really cool. And it does look really cool. Um, and he does a few in Dragons Forever. He does a famous one where he has a, a suitcase under his hand and he basically flips it and then catches the handle. That's really cool. He does that in Dragons Forever. It's a really, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. <sighs> Drunken Master 2. I think Drunken Master 2 has to go at the top. <laughs> It's definitely one of the best films of Jackie Chan's career. No question about it. A rare case when the sequel is better than the original. Um, Drunken Master 2. Um, basically, um, not too many stunts in this film. Uh, it's all about the fight choreography. There is literally about four or five fight sequences in this film that are pretty much as close to perfection as you can get with fight choreography the final sequence in this film i applaud you if you are going to go away and you are going to watch one sequence from any of jackie chan's films watch the final scene from drunken master 2 it took four months to shoot it took two days on one shot of fight choreography he literally him and ken lo have this fight sequence and it is absolutely astonishing it's incredible absolutely incredible um it's just I, you just uh, the movement 
the fact that he takes huge swigs of industrial strength alcohol and basically becomes absolutely blasted in a second and then decides to do all the kung fu and all this stuff and absolutely just destroy the villain with brilliant pieces of acrobatic movement and martial arts. It is, yeah, I I can't speak highly enough of it. It's a it's a it's one of the best films of his career. Uh, which means the original will go under great because you've got to. You know, the original really kicked Jackie Chan in the superstardom. Um, he'd done that Snake and Eagle Shadow, which we'll probably get onto a bit later, but this was the one that really sent him into the stratosphere. And I think it was 1978, Drunken uh, Master came out. It just took the world, you know, took the uh, Asia by storm. Uh, it really is one of the first times he really gets to show that he's a great comedian. Um, and in this stage of his career, he's not doing stunts. It's all about the fight choreography and the comedy. And he gets that down spot on in this film. I, just, I think the the sequel builds upon it, and that's why the sequel's a bit higher up, but Drunken Master's still a classic. Oh, Fearless Hyena 2, I haven't seen. In fact, I haven't seen both Fearless Hyenas, which is, I really should, because they're supposed to be really, you know, they're supposed to be very solid uh, examples of classic old school martial art films Forbidden Kingdom I went to see this in the cinema uh, I think it's good I think it's slightly plodding the plot is a bit out there uh, the little kid in it who you know travels back in time with them um, you know, travels to I think he travels to ancient China uh, the little kid it's like a time travel fantasy film um He's not the best. Uh, but basically, whenever either Jackie Chan or Jet Li are on screen, it's great. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are times where they're not on screen, and it's actually quite plodding. But fortunately for us, a lot of the time they're on screen. And when they're on screen together, absolute A1. <laughs> it's great. You know, that's what you pay the money for. That's what you when you look at the poster and it's Jack, Jackie Chan and Jet Li, you go, uh, yes, I want to see that. Um, I'm very surprised they haven't gone on to make any more films together, to be honest, because they're very good. Um, although I don't know if Jet Li... I think Jet Li's health um, has declined a bit in recent years. I don't think... And I, I think uh, with, with Jackie getting um, a bit older as well, uh, I, I don't think it's... It's the kind of thing that you wished happened in the 90s. You wished that they did this film in the 90s. If they did it in the 90s, or if they did the modern day thing where there were two policemen teaming up together and do it, it would be, it'd probably be in legendary category. But because it's this slightly, I'll say slightly over the hills, a bit harsh, but this, they're getting on in years in this one. It's it's a bit slowed down. It's still great, um, but you can tell that they're, they're not quite at their peak. <laughs> but it's still good. Gorgeous. Jackie Chan in a romantic comedy. And it's actually not too bad. I invite, I actually put it ahead of you know, Chinese Zodiac and Accidental Spy. I actually think the romance is, is uh, okay. I think the girl, she Q, she's in... Um, Transporter uh, with Jason Statham. She's she's really she's really gorgeous, <laughs> as the title suggests. And her romance with Jackie Chan is quite sweet. Um, there's some great little action sequences in this film. Um, there's a great one with uh, where he's fighting off a load of a load of goons wearing masks with baseball bats and he basically uses the bats against them. Uh, and there's a, and there's a two hand, a two part fight where he, he has two fights effectively with Brad Allen. Um, uh, one of his Jackie Chan stunt team who went on to be a, a stunt director himself and has sadly passed away now, but he, um, he, he has a great couple of fights with him. Like really, and it's it's probably the best martial arts fighting Jackie has done 
since Drunken Master 2, actually. It, 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 he, he really is brilliant in it. Um, do you know what? Actually, that, that alone puts it up to good, actually. Yeah, I've just talked myself into that. Gorgeous is good uh, uh, because of the fight sequences. Heart of the Dragon, I have not seen. I'm afraid. Miracles is good. Um, I put it. I put it ahead of Armor of God. This is this is Jackie, famously um, pushing the boundaries. He got a bit sick of people in Hong Kong saying that Jackie Chan can only make action films. He's actually not that good as a filmmaker. He's only good at filming fight sequences. Was the common criticism in Hong Kong at the time. So in the late eighties, Jackie Chan decided to break the bank, effectively getting crane cameras and basically remake a pocket full of miracles and do it in Hong Kong. And it's actually really good. Um, it's it looks the the setting is great. It's 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 shot like it's the nineteen thirties. He um, he has some really good action. Uh, fight sequences in this film uh, in, in, he has great tricks with the hat the, the cinematography is superb considering this is Hong Kong they do not have much money the fact that he was able to do some of the camera movements that he was able to do in this film back in 1989 is wonderful uh, and it proves he can direct he can direct good films um it, it, I, it, I think it's a good film. I, I do, I do, I do think so. I don't think it's great because I think there are other films that I prefer him in, and I prefer watching over Miracles. But you have to appreciate Miracles. I believe that this is Mr. Nice Guy, and Mr. Nice Guy is okay. The best scene in it by some distance, is the fight in the construction site where he uh, basically gets a buzzsaw in between his legs, the classic cartoon image of a buzzsaw going up in between someone's legs. He actually has that happen to him as he's moving back and then he bowls over the top of the buzzsaw. That's incredible. That's amazing. Um, that construction site sequence is the saving grace of the film, really. The rest of it is not particularly good um there's okay action sequences with the construction side being the outstanding action sequence um yeah it's just okay my lucky stars i have not seen new police story this is where it, he starts to get a bit serious <laughs> like he's done a lot of police story films this one is good. I put it as good. I think it's... Oh. Yeah, I put, it, I put it there. I think he... I want to say tries too hard to act in this film. I think by this stage in his career, I think this was the mid-noughties, he was wanting to do more acting like show that he was a good actor and I've known and, 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 and the thing is believe it or not I don't think he needs to do that because I think he's already proven that he's a good actor I think just through the physical uh, his physicality and the conviction he puts towards his performances he has proven that he's a good actor he doesn't need to be serious to prove that he's a dramatic character uh, actor but, and I feel that with some of his films, he tries to do that a bit too much. Sometimes it really, he really, it works. He's absolutely brilliant. And sometimes it's a bit over the top and it's like overacting. And I think with New Police Story, he's slightly over, over the top with it. It's a bit too much. Um, having said that, the story's very good. The action's great. And it, it, it tells a good story. He has a good character arc in it. I just think he's a bit overacting in places. But nonetheless, a good film. Operation Condor. 
Armour of God 2. This is a great film. This is a very... This is a great film. This is so much fun. This is an absolute romp. This is basically... Uh, Armour of God... Take what was good in Armour of God, that last third, and stretch it out as much as you can. And basically add a few bit more comedy into it, a bit more humour and a bit more epic scale by going over to uh, Africa and uh, a bit of exotic uh, exoticism <laughs> oh god I've butchered that one but make the film more exotic and that's what he's done with Armour of, uh, with, um, Armour of God 2 Operation Condor uh, there's a great stunt sequences with the motorcycle riding which is incredible um, he has a great fight in a wind tunnel uh, the, the even better fight is before that which is be, uh, which is Similar to what he would do later in Chinese Zodiac, but here it's him is, you know, this is 1990. This is him, I think he's like 36 years old. This is him at pretty, pretty much physical peak, basically going all out. And he does some amazing bits of uh, wall climbing and uh, basically basically parkour before parkour um, in this film. He, he had loads of climbing and intricate uh movement it's he, he is great in it and the comedy in this film the comedy is really good in this film it's really funny his his interaction with the two lead girls in it oh no there are three lead girls and there are three girls in it that he actually has to work with and the comedy he has with them is superb um yeah really good ah police story two is top of good for me. It has a couple of outstanding sequences. Um, there's there's great stunt stunt sequences here where he jumps over the tops of double decker buses to cross a street. Uh, that's very famous. Um, there's a playground scene which is one of the best fight sequences in his whole career in his entire career um the fight in the playground is incredible um absolutely incredible uh he 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 plays us it's, it's a slightly darker film this one it really is you know his girlfriend gets kidnapped and he gets tortured um and the thing is is here's, here's the difference between uh, jackie chan being tortured in a jackie chan film and Daniel Craig, say, being tortured in Casino Royale. Uh, obviously, in Casino Royale, we know, you know, because it's Hollywood filmmaking, that he's not really getting, that Daniel Craig's not really getting whacked in the balls. You know, we really, we know that he's not, that's not really happening to him. Jackie Chan gets, <laughs> he says, well, I've got to, you know, we, don't, yeah, we can't fake this, you know. I, I'm going to take, you know, there's basically a uh, massive, um, what the, what the things you you do you have the little bags with little um pieces of gunpowder in or, or where you throw to a phone it, it pops and it, it creates like a spark he basically gets one some as big as your hand and get it launched at him his face from close range and on his body and you can clearly see it's burning and bruising it and he's getting it launched at him by his stuntman and the reason he's doing that is because he says well my guy has to be tortured so I have to you know I can't fake this you know we haven't got the money to fake it let's just, just do it <laughs> it's like he is he is a little bit there's no question about it Jai Chan is a little bit crazy um, but my god do you appreciate it a lot more because when you actually see him getting hurt it's like he's actually getting hurt here so it's not you know you're going along with his character to the thing of shit you know you know stop this torture now because he's actually really getting hurt um and there's scenes like that it goes really dark in places a scene where he's got a bomb strapped to him and he has to defuse it himself those scenes are it's it's dark for a Jackie Chan film, but he really sells it well. This is where his acting's really good. Just as he overdid it a bit in New Police Story, here he gets it absolutely spot on. And it's just because he's not trying to act too much, he's just reacting to the situation in a realistic manner. Yeah, really good film is um, Police Story 2. It's almost up there, actually. Whew. 
But I'll just leave it as good for now. Oh, Police Story 3. Nah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, Jackie Chan, Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> that's a great film. <laughs> that's absolutely a great film. Um, famously hanging from the... Um, hanging from the helicopter uh, with a rope ladder. That's, that's classic. Um, actually, do you know what? It's legendary. Sorry, <laughs> I've just told, I've just just by saying that stunt <laughs> and making myself realise that actually, yeah, uh, he hung underneath a moving helicopter on a rope ladder, and it got flown round Kuala Lumpur, and then he dropped onto a moving train. <laughs> I mean that that in itself is a legendary stunt. That he 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 has to he has to go in the top. And the rest of the film is a lot of fun. And him and Michelle Yeoh are a kick-ass partnership. Uh, yeah, Police Story 3, great film. Just just a great film. Uh, this was the film that got me... If it, it, The first Jackie Chan film I watched was Rush Hour, as I think a lot of people my age would be the first Jackie Chan film. One of the second films I watched where I got on VHS was Jackie Chan's first strike. And Jackie Chan's first strike is great. It's basically Jackie Chan being James Bond. So for me, I loved it. Um, there are great stunts in here where he's he has to leap on the side of buildings, on the on, on the side of huge high rise buildings. You know what, like Tom Cruise did. Um, well, Jackie's basically doing that. Um, in a similar way, with no safety net and no wires at all, he's basically going around the edge, of, skirting around the edge of a high-rise building with nothing, you know, holding on to nothing. So, for me, uh, that's that's brilliant. The, the it's world, you know, this this film, if it's famous for one sequence, it's the step ladder fight where he basically fights off a load of uh, gentlemen with a step ladder. <laughs> If it sounds cool, um, if that sounds cool to you, uh, it's not nearly as cool as it actually is, so I implore you to actually go and watch it. It is a remarkable piece of fight choreography. Um, one of the best fights of his career. It, the, the fact that he at one point leaps feet, fir, feet first through one of the steps in the ladder, that's incredible. That's just mind-blowing. It's, it's one of these moments I, wow, Um um, thanks to YouTube, you can just go, right, uh, skip back 10 seconds, skip back 10 seconds, get, and you just keep watching it, and you're like, oh, how the hell has he done that? <laughs> um, yeah, remarkable. So, yeah, it's great. A, a great film. Would I put it ahead of Trunk? Uh, it's a bit... Uh, I'll put it... Yeah, it's even great. <laughs> Not quite as good as Operation Condor. Uh, well, this is, this is probably the easiest one to rank. Um... Police Story 1 is going in legendary. It's probably the best Jackie Chan film. Police Story 1 is probably the best Jackie Chan film. It will probably forever be the best Jackie Chan film. Um, what can I say about this other than it's one of the best action films ever made? Across the whole world. You know, by far one of the best action films ever made. It's, it's just... Um, uh, fight, stunt, fight, stunt. Fight. People are really getting hit and hurt in this. It is, you you can tell that people, you know, are just putting Jackie and his stunt team are literally putting their necks on the line. Um, the story behind this film is quite interesting. He went over to America. Uh, he tried to make it in America in the 1980s he was already a big star in hong kong and in the early 1980s he went over to hollywood to try his hand at that and they didn't know how to they didn't know who he was and they didn't treat him with any respect and they basically paired him with shite directors who didn't know how to direct so he made this film called the protector which he basically plays a kind of clint eastwood character who's has a gun and just shoots people once and, and that's it um, it featured no very little comedy very little martial arts it portrayed Jackie as a hard man which he's never been 
at any time in his career. He has never played that. Um, it was it was rubbish, and Jackie knew it was rubbish whilst he was making it, and he wanted to get off it, and he basically turned around to this director and said, you have no idea how to make a police film or how to make an action film. I'm going to go back to Hong Kong and I'm going to make my own police film and I'm going to show you how it's done. He went back and he made Police Story. And it's like, oh my God. So you can tell that Jackie was seriously motivated to make the best damn action film he could. And if that meant killing himself to do it, he was going to do it. So there are scenes in this film where he's literally sliding down electrified poles and he's hanging onto the sides of buses and he's getting thrown through sheet glass and he basically is just taking it because he knows the end result is going to be spectacular. And my God, is it spectacular. There's about three or four scenes in this film that are just unbelievable to watch. And you watch it like, ooh, because you know people are really getting hurt. Like, there's no question. You know that this is all done for real. There's no special effects here. The comedy in it is great. Uh, it is, it's, yeah, best film of his career. So, easily on Legendary. Oh, the two Project A's. Uh, they're the wrong way around. So I'm going to go Project A1, which has to be in great. In fact, I'm going to make this easy. Both Project A films are great. They are really, really solid pieces of entertainment. I'm going to put Project A1 slightly ahead because that is the film that really cemented Jackie as... The, um, as basically untouchable within the action field because Project A was the first film in which he basically did a big stunt, um, which is famously the clock tower one where he basically hangs from the side of the clock and he falls. Um, unlike Harold Lloyd in Safety Last, who didn't fall, Jackie lets go and falls about 40 feet through two canopies and then hits the deck he doesn't even there's no mat he hits the floor hard and he does it a couple of times because he wanted because he didn't quite like the first take so he went and did another one and in the film they show it twice oh yeah it's um oof. that's that's an incredible moment uh, the bicycle fight uh, chase sequence is pure silent comedy brilliance. Um, oh shit, do you know what? It's, it's legendary, isn't it? <laughs> Project A is legendary because of the bike, sequ bike sequence. Uh, the fact that it's Sammo Hung and Yoon Bu together um, and, and Jackie together for the first time, I believe it was this film. And it's, ju it's just, yeah, it's, it's actually, actually, it's legendary. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's it's one of his very best, um, and the sequel is great. I'm going to keep the sequels great because that that didn't have Sammo Hung and Yoon Bu in, but it has some great moments. There's basically a half hour at the end, which is almost non-stop action, um, where he's doing some unbelievable free running parkour stuff stunts. Um, some of the falls, it's like, how are you not dead? Like, literally, there's one way he falls down the scaffolding. It's like, how have you not died? And but apparently beforehand, he was actually like, uh, but we're not going to put any, you know, it's a bit high, this, you know. And he actually just went for it. He did actually know. He actually, apparently he said that jump, he actually did it without having a clue if it would actually work or if he'd actually survive. He just thought, okay. So, and you see it in the film, you're like, Jesus, <laughs> you know, that is, that is a... a, a a bloody unbelievable fall that he took. Almost in, as impressive as the clock tower one. So, yeah. Uh, I, I could say this for every Jackie Chan film. Some good fight sequences in it as well. Uh, there's a very funny scene where he has to fight off guys and he, he, he eats a load of chilies and then he spits the chili oil into his hand and after a while of going... <gasps> He basically then uses the oil to pat it on the guy's faces and it, it disorientates them while he takes them out. That's very clever. That's very funny as well. There's a sequence where he has to do a whole fight where he's handcuffed to one of his superiors. And that in itself has a whole load of comedy in it as well. Yeah, yeah. great stuff. 
one of the mid noughties films now, Robbie Hood. And Robbie Hood is good. <laughs> Robbie Hood is a good film. I think Robbie Hood is a lot of fun. Um, it's it has some really impressive stunt sequences in it. There's one where he's uh, where Jackie Chan has to hide from uh, a bunch of goons in a theme park and he basically climbs on a roller coaster and the goons obviously know that he's on the track of the roller coaster so they set a roller coaster off and he's dodging a roller coaster as it's going around the track. That's seriously impressive. Um, but also there's some, there, there is probably the saddest scene in his whole career, like literally a scene that I look at and go, wow, oof, just amazing. Uh, great acting, actually, uh, which is where the the young boy um, it just comes right at the end of the end fight, where the young boy has been trapped in a fridge and his his body temperature is really cold, and they don't have a defibrillator or anything to basically help this young boy. So Jackie Chan gets to gets the car lead, puts you know holds onto it visibly like electrocuting himself but also uses his fingers and and zaps the baby to and and mind you to keep the baby alive whilst also really hurting himself and the tears are flowing god that's a go that hits you hard <laughs> that really hits you hard him doing that um uh, but yeah really he plays like an anti-hero in it. I think he plays like a, a thief or criminal that accidentally steals a baby and then it's about how they look after this baby. Um, but the action's great in it. The Yeah, the, it's, it's really... Wow. Lovely. Lo lovely film. Um, and, and shows a side to Jackie that we don't see too often. So in that respect, it's good. <laughs> wow. Wimble in the Bronx is great. <laughs> His breakout American film. This was the film that they basically, because they butchered, Hollywood butchered him in the 80s. He went back to Hong Kong, smashed it, and then basically made a Hong Kong film in Vancouver and then released it in America. And he had complete control over it because it was a Hong Kong film. So, and then America realized, oh shit, he's actually really good this guy and it's like yeah well when you actually let him do what he's supposed to do and you actually give him the control that he actually requires to do his thing of course he's going to make good films <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like th th that's why it's a good great film um brilliant stunt work in this the whole hovercraft sequence where he has to do barefoot water skiing behind a hovercraft that's amazing and um, the fact that in one of the scenes he um he jumped onto the hovercraft broke his ankle, then had his ankle in a cast, um, didn't shot, stop shooting, um, put a sock, painted it like a trainer, put it over the cast, and then carried on filming. <laughs> and then the more I say this, the more crazy it seems that this guy is, but this is the type of thing that I think is just great. <laughs> I mean, bonkers, but brilliant. Like, that, that is, talk about caring for your art, I mean, Jesus. There's the rooftop jump in this one. There's a few fantastic fight sequences. There's one in a, in a gangster's hideout where he's using fridges and TVs and skis and he's spinning around and, and uh, pinball machines to fight off the bad guys. And basically, with Jackie Chan, he uses whatever is around him to full effect. And it's just brilliant. <sighs> it's actually a really good film to start people off on Jackie Chan, I think, uh, because you literally get everything Jackie Chan's about in one film. The Rush Hour Trilogy. Okay. Right. First one, great. Second one, I like even better. Third one is poor. <laughs> there we go. That's the Rush Hour Trilogy. Um... The, yeah, the third one is the first poor I've put on this list. Um, it's just not a good film. Uh, it's just not a good film. Uh, it's, it's, they, they try too hard with the humour in it. 
they do not give Chan enough action sequences to do in this film. Um, it's um, yeah, it's it's not the best. Is Rush Hour three? That's that's why I put it as poor. The first two Rush Hours are great. It's a shame, really, because I really like the first one and I really like the uh, the second one as well. I like the second one a bit more because it gives it lets Chan be more. Jackie Chan like um, it, they clearly gave him because he was in Hong Kong they gave him more creative control over the action sequences in Rush Hour 2 um, and therefore the fight sequences are better the stunts are better and that's why the film in my opinion is better um, but Rush Hour itself is a gr Rush Hour is a fan in terms of plot is the best plot of Chan's career, I think. One of the best plots to a film in Chan's career. It's a really simple plot, a kidnapping and he has to sort it. But the way it's told is really well done. So I've got to give huge credit to the original Rush Hour 2. Um, right, the Shanghai films. Okay. Shanghai Noon, I think, is good. Shanghai Nights... I actually think is Jackie Chan's best Hollywood film. I would actually go as far as say Shanghai Nights is legendary. <laughs> I think um, Shanghai Noon is a great western. It's got a great. It's a great. It's. Uh, <laughs> I say it's a great western. I've just thought it's good. Um, I think it's good because. Um, I'm not big into westerns, to be completely honest. I'm not a huge western fan. If you are a fan of westerns, you'll probably absolutely love Shanghai Noon. Um, I uh, like it a lot. I think Jackie is really good in it, and the partnership with Owen Wilson is great. I just think it's better in the sequel. And what I like about the sequel is it's set in old England. And I like the fact that in the sequel, um, he was working with a director who gave Jackie complete creative control over all the action sequences. And as a result, you get some of the best Hollywood Jackie Chan fight sequences. The highlight being the scene with the umbrellas, which is the best Jackie Chan action sequence in any of his Hollywood films. Um, the, the scene where he fights off a load of guys with an umbrella and then it turns into a singing in the rain balletic dance fight sequence that itself is absolutely brilliant <laughs> that is and only Jackie Chan could do a fight sequence like that and he knows that he's the only one who could do it and do it that well so that's why it's it's got it's 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 got a few other great action sequences the humour in this film is brilliant I enjoy it more you know quite a bit more than Shanghai Noon um, so yeah I, I, I think Shanghai Nights is actually a legendary <laughs> unlike The Spy Next Door which uh, it feels a bit harsh putting The Spy Next Door as poor because it's not, it's just because it's a kids' film, but it's not even a good kids' film. That is poor. Yeah, and the medallion is poor. They're just, they're, they're films where they waste him. They really waste Jackie Chan in these films, especially this one. I mean, why the hell you would put Jackie Chan in a special effects heavy flying around? old fantasy film I have no idea why you do that like I know Forbidden Kingdom did it but they didn't take the piss this one it, it has him like being like just flying around with really cheesy special effects and it's just crap like it really I, I mean Lee Evans is in it and I love Lee Evans but even he can't save it I, I, and yeah so nah yeah and, and Spy Next Door is, yeah it's a kids film and it's bad <laughs> basically foreigner great film
If you've not seen The Foreigner, it's on Netflix. Check it out. It's got Pierce Brosnan in it as well, and Pierce Brosnan plays a right badass, and Jackie Chan plays a guy who is literally just his world has fallen apart in this film. He he really acts well as a guy whose world has completely fallen apart and he's trying to pick up the pieces and get justice and he will get justice no matter what. And it's basically like Jackie Chan doing Taken, which is brilliant. <laughs> um, Pierce Brosnan's great in it. It's really well directed by Martin Campbell. It's actually tense. It's a very good, good film. Um, in fact, it's better than that. It's a great film. <laughs> um, yeah, check out The Foreigner. If you haven't checked out The Foreigner, do. Ah, uh, the tuxedo. Uh, yeah, right, you know... Okay. Out of all the pores, it's the best poor film. <laughs> but that's not saying too much. The reason that this film is okay... It, it's not even okay. The reason it's like the high end of poor is because Jackie Chan sells the comedy scenes in it really, <clears throat> really, really well. Um, but the action's not that good and it's special hex, special, special hex, special effects heavy yet again. And it just, the Chan does not suit special, he special effects heavy films. He just doesn't suit it because that's not... He is the special effect. That's the whole point. People go to watch him perform. And even if he gets to 70, year old, uh, 70 years old and he can just jump off a wall, people would rather see that than him flying through the air. And that's what the tuxedo does. And it's like... It, during this period, as you can all see, they're in the noughties films. Basically, Hollywood, Jackie wanted to try this stuff, but he didn't have much experience with the Hollywood system to know if he was given shite to work with. And until he was too far into the films to go, oh, bollocks. And I think even Jackie, whilst making these films, probably knew that it's like, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done these films. Um, let's see. Yeah. Jennifer Love Hewitt is cute in it. Jackie has some funny moments. That's about it. The rest of it is absolute bobbins. Um, Twin Dragons is okay. Good little fight sequences. Um, good concept. Actually, for the time of how it's shot, it's really quite clever. Um, having two Jackies on screen at the same time. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good fun. It's good. It's good fun. This, um, I just wouldn't. I just think that the it's it's plodding in places, um, and yeah, it's it's a bit not not too many action sequences. In fact, the only action sequence I can remember is the car factory one at the end, which is really good. But that's about it. The rest of it is kind of just plodding along, really. It's a shame because it has potential. To, it had potential to be a really good film, but it's 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 just okay. Uh, Twinkle, Twinkle, Lucky Stars. I have not seen yet. Um, let's make this easy for myself. Uh, Winners and Sinners. Unfortunately, I have not seen yet either. There, there's several. You know, basically, it's the Lucky Stars films I haven't seen, and I should because they're supposed to be really good martial art films. Right, these three. Okay, Wheels on Meals. Great film. Absolutely great. Um, yeah, it's it's got some it's got the probably one of the best one it's got the best one on one fight sequence of Jackie Chan's career with Benny the Jet in the fight you know at the end. That is a hard you know, full on two martial artists going full at it. Um that's a great fight sequence. The, the location is set in Barcelona. Barcelona looks great in it. They make full use of the setting. Um, yeah, really good film. Top of great for me. Oh, The Young Master. I think The Young Master is good. It's very much in the vein of Drunken Master. They kind of expand on that a bit. 
but it's not as good as Drunken Master. It's still in the classic martial arts area. Um, there's a lovely scene in it where he has a fight with a fan, and it, and again it took about three hundred and. 25 takes to do one movement with a fan where he threw it in the air and then caught it and caught it back in one movement. Um, that's what this film's probably famous most for, is that. Uh, but there's a great sword fighting sequence in it. Um, the final fight with the kickboxing champion, whose name escapes me, um, goes on for about 20 minutes, which even for me, who loves martial art films, is a bit too long bit too long it's a bit too much it's like ah uh, you could have trimmed that down a bit um but it's a good film this is one of my favorite jackie chan films so this is going up near the top who am i uh basically uh, a cheap born identity with jackie chan in um but he's absolute boss. He is brilliant in this film. He is absolutely brilliant in this film. Playing a guy who loses his memory and then has to find the people who did it and then stop a, an energy source being sold to um, arms dealers is brilliant. And I, do, do you know, when I was a kid, it actually had a big impact on me because um, there's a sequence in this film where the, uh, the bad guys are transferring $1 billion dollars in cash, uh, you know, they're transferring one billion dollars, um, not in cash, <laughs> electronically, um, and what? And they leave the room to get some coffee, and Jackie Chan sneaks in behind and steals the the disc that uh, which contains all the uh, the weaponry, which is going to be used, um, and which the two arms dealers who are trading money are selling between them. He steals that, and then he has a slight thought of, well, the transaction hasn't gone through yet. So he sneaks over, takes the, the money out of the transaction, and donates it to save the children fund, which is just a brilliant little moment. He didn't have to do that, but because he is very much, very, you know, he's a, he's a great, a philanthropist in real life and he's very charitable in real life he felt the need that in his film he had to show that giving money to charity is a good thing and he encouraged me as a youngster to give money to charity through that one action um because i thought well if someone as cool as jackie chan's doing it sure as hell i'm gonna do it that combined with roger moore and unicef yeah i was sold on giving money to charity from quite young watching these films um but it's not just a sequence like that. It's a whole sequence where he's having a fight with uh, using um, Dutch clogs. And he's sliding around and he's, he's, he's having a fight um, on top of a skyscraper and getting kicked to the edge of that skyscraper with no safety net. <laughs> and you're thinking, Shit. like, he easily could have fallen off. Like, <laughs> this is him. For me, this is where... This was just before Rush Hour. This is just before Hollywood hit. And you can tell that there is a Jackie up to Who Am I and after Who Am I. Up to Who Am I is kind of the better era where he really was going for it with the stunts. And then the Hollywood thing, it kind of took the stunt element a little bit away. He becomes to be a bit more safe, a bit more, which is grand because it's meant his career has lasted longer, but you miss that element of, Jesus Christ, he really could die. And with Who Am I, there are some scenes in it where he's like, yeah, he really could have died. Um, but he just went there and did it for our entertainment. The story's great in it. The character he plays in it is really good. There's some great moments of comedy in it. Lovely little scenes like the charity thing I was talking about. Overall, great film. Who Am I is a great film. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Jackie Chan films. Wow. Good grief. Um, he's done a lot of films, hasn't he? Um, if you've not watched any of this man's work, I highly suggest that you do check out one of those films because you may find that you absolutely love the guy, like I do. Um and you may find it's not your cup of tea, which is absolutely fine. Um, but I, I hope you check him out and enjoy yourself. Um, 
whilst watching them. He is a unique performer. There is no question about it. And in terms of putting your life on the line for your art, he's probably arguably one of the most devoted actors there has ever been in the history of cinema. <laughs> um, so, hope you enjoyed that. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you again soon.